we are going to configure top dead center what to look for so you can actually put the distributor in correctly. The distributor is done. We'll pull it out of the box. Now they have to put it in there. It's a Toyota non-US vacuum curve distributor. We put electronic guts in. We modify it, check it, make sure everything's working. And then it gets sent to you like this. And we'll have a little bit of assembly lube here. And then we'll have some brake juice for the cam gear, something like that. And we'll put on the teeth because that is going to go into a new cam or a used cam. Either way, we want a little bit of protection between the two gears. This particular point right here is very critical for the insertion down in there. So we're going to show you how to do that. Number one way of finding out if you have top dead center. If your distributor's out, okay, needle, line. FSM says to set it at before top dead center. I never do that, ever. This is a better way of doing it. Rule number two is on your compression stroke, the piston, number one piston, will be at the top of the bore. But you could have that 180 out because you don't know it's actually on compression. But the piston needs to be at the top so you can look at that with bore scope or whatever. Okay, because this could be on the other stroke. And we could be one, we could be 180 out. We're gonna verify that. One, two, three, five, seven, nine, R bottom of the cam lobe. You can see like 10, 11, 12, this one right here, they're open. These are all, if you look at the push rods from an angle, okay, these should all, one, two, three, five, seven, and nine should be at basically the same height. Toyota cam, like the base circles are off just a little bit, but they're all gonna be even. So I just go, yep, that feels loose, 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 loose. Loose, loose, I'm good. Top dead center compression. I don't even go past number three. I literally look at one, two, three. They're always even at top dead compression with cylinder number one. Boom, boom, boom. If you're curious, just look at this one. Number six, six should be doing something which is open, opening a valve or opening itself. If you can't figure out, if you're like, I just don't Trust know me, yeah. that one right there. Okay, it's gotta be open. So top dead center compression, line, a needle, Distributor. You got two wires on the distributor that come out. These are gonna go straight to negative side of the coil, black. Hot side of the coil, red. Done. So how you put these suckers in, because technically you wanna be able to move this body and the gear with the rotor at the same time and get it into a certain placement. I have a certain procedure for it, which is putting the clamp on. This bolt is loose and this bolt is slightly loose. So when it's fully seated, top of this 2F clamp is gonna be basically right under this machine casting. I call it a two click rule. One, the first click is you can feel the gear kind of mesh and then the O-ring kind of seat. And the second click is actually the correct meshing for this with this into that. So it's gonna go boom, boom. You can get them in there and then you go, I think I'm done. And then you fire up the motor and you have no oil pressure. That's because this doesn't get seated all the way down into the, into the hole. So the first thing we do, is take a big old long screwdriver. Okay, and this is rotating your oil pump right now at one RPM. So what I like to do is get my screwdriver basically completely this plane perpendicular to the camshaft center line. So you can call it like 12, six o'clock. All right, so you right? want it straight up and down. You see it? Oh, oh there, there it we is. Go. Oh, yeah. oh, wait, oh yeah, yeah, there it goes. But basically I like to put the distributor about, mm, I don't know, 30 degrees off, 35, it's something like that. If it gets stabbed correctly and everything meshes right, and then this clip is close to that after it gets all the way, you'll never get the cap off. So we want to organize the distributor like this and basically find number one. This is obviously a gear and it's catching and then it's turning as it goes in. So we're gonna start off to the right. So I'm gonna point this eh, over to that area, which is between two and three. I'm just gonna... We're gonna find a gear. Okay, this is not, oh, there it goes. That didn't go all the way in. This is not all the way in. It feels like it's in, but it is not. That's all the way in. The thing will run, there's no question about it. However, this rotor is pointing about an inch and a half too far from where I want it to actually get the body in the position right about here while it's running when it's tuned after you fire it up and you actually chase timing. So what we're gonna do is we're going to actually pull the distributor back out. I'm gonna turn the oil pump to the right just a little. 
And we're not talking about like an eighth of an inch. I'm literally talking just a little bit. And when I pop that thing back in, I'm trying to get this rotor to literally point right where my finger is, which is the hump in front of number four. This is just where I like it. You can have your rotor pointing here, that's fine. These clips will be farther away from the tin, which is fine. You could do it, you could literally do it like this, but I like mine just right there. That's just me. Right. And these get real close to the timing cover. If you had our camshaft, basically you're probably gonna be putting them in here mm. in, in this position. If it's a stock camshaft, then I like them just a little bit over. So I'm gonna move this guy. Just a tinkle to the left. I mean, you can feel the oil pump move just a tinkle with a screwdriver. That's not much, man. That's very little. I'm gonna feel. I, I like to go up and down and kind of feel the tooth to see if I'm on top of it or if I'm going down the side of it. Nope. So I'm just pick it back up and I try and feel that tooth again. And then now I'm too far to the left. So now I gotta go just to the right, just a little. And the funny part is, is these gears move when you pull them in inside or the pump shafts mm. move when you pull them in and out so many times. But... And the only reason I didn't do this in one jam is because it's an instructional video. Nope, too far. I didn't lose it enough. Come on now. <laughs> this deal. Okay, we'll call it there. Even though I want it like right here, uh, what yeah. whatever. Okay. It's fine. And we can put a cap on. Little groove notch right there, and that goes to that little guy. With the, with the Bingo. Notch. So the notch goes there, all right? Put that sucker on, clamp it, okay? And then obviously you're gonna hook your electronics up. Number one, the cap is nice enough to give you 153624, okay. which is fine. Put your plugs in. There is a ball down in here, and that's before top dead center. The timing light and the ball and the needle, all three have to happen at the same time. Flashing happens down in here with the timing light. You're going for the ball, and the ball is telling you what the timing is. If you have an adjustable timing light, I like to set it to start at seven to eight degrees, seven or eight degrees at 750 RPM. That's kind of what I like. And the needle will be on the ball. If you don't have an adjustable timing light, you're just gonna basically put the ball, right, you want eight degrees, you're gonna be right above the needle. And then the clamping, the clamping thing, too many people do this. Too many people come in here and they over tighten this thing. Okay, it does not, it literally does not take much. Okay, so now if you notice, the clamp is moving with the body of the distributor. You can get your timing close and then come in here and then basically tighten this guy once you got your timing and then you check it again. And if you need just a little bit, you could loosen this. If you need a little bit more, then loosen this, but do not over tighten. It doesn't take much to actually right. over tighten this thing to where it starts stretching that bolt. That's pretty tight, so you could tighten those two things, leave it kind of tight like this, start the truck over and over and over, and this distributor is not gonna slap with the motor rotation on the cam gear. And then you can come over here, and especially if it's just you, allow it to move without a lot of tension, but enough to where it sits by itself, to where you can go start the truck, see if it works, come back, go yada yada, because if you're trying to taste timing and your rotor's off, you're gonna fight it a little bit. But if you're getting between here and here, you're gonna be good to go. Um, and then this is advancing the timing this direction, and this is retarding the timing. Advancing is this way, so counterclockwise so, is advancing. Okay. Okay. And then this is retarding the timing. And then other than that, like I said, the wires go to the coil. Black is ground, red is positive. I like to put just a little bit of dielectric grease on the plugs, and yeah. off you go. So, and that's how you put one of those in. Well, the FSM does, says to put it here, right? But they're all, they're also doing it like seven degrees before top dead center instead of the line. I like the line, but I like the line because I don't like my distributors. This is just me. I don't like them like this. Even though that's easier to put in and stuff, or at least take the caps off, I don't know why. I don't know if it was because I was 19, that's the way I always put them in. I, I'm not sure. Right. The rotor's inside here, right? Right. And so the rotor's around the number one plug. So technically, if you're off a tooth and you don't want to pull the distributor out, you can literally take this and go boop and move your plug wire set just literally one over. If you're a newbie, don't do that. Yeah. That's, you yeah. know, that's quick fix stuff. If your rotor was farther over to the right, your cap needs to go this way, but it's going to time the same way because mm -hmm. they're in conjunction. You're trying to find out where the rotor's sparking off of number one, basically. If it's 180 out, you're hitting here and your rotor's pointing it and you're hitting six and it is going to go, ah, poo, boom. 
and it will have a backfire. You're just gonna be way off. But when you retard the timing, it's gonna drop RPMs. When you're advancing the timing, it's gonna raise them to a point. Things are gonna get a little fun when you go too far. And Toyota 2F stock cam, they will not take a lot of timing like based on you, they won't do it. They're just not designed that way. So like I said, the FSM sets at, you know, at seven, I like it at seven. We lose up here with a stock cam after nine degrees of base timing with the needle on the ball, which is when the engine's running, because we set them at top dead center, we don't get power after nine degrees. The new cams do, they, they go past that, but factory service back was seven. So basically this little guy is seven. That's why I said, I always just do an advancing timing light, set it to seven or eight with this sequence and you'll be fine. Honestly, you'll be good to go.